Wah! Hello guys, Dan the Wolfman here, and today I'm going to be breaking down uh, Jeff Chan's video, Heavy Sparring Jeet Kune Do Fighter. And before we get there, I want to play a little bit of snippets of, of Bruce Lee footage and myself using JKD techniques in MMA and a bit of my JKD background. I don't know exactly how many years, but a couple different schools between 97 and like 2002, along with doing everything else that I was doing. I also trained at a couple of Jeet Kune Do schools, and I used a lot of it in my fights and in my sparring highlights. And you can watch my sparring versus 30 fighters video. But I'm going to show a snippet from my Bruce Lee five favorite JKD techniques used in MMA video, which is a video you should check out. So I'm going to play that first, and that will give us a little bit of background as I break down the heavy sparring of Jeff Chan versus JKD instructor. So here we go, guys. Always, please, if you want to learn how to defend yourself, I'm a martial arts expert. Get my competitive street jiu-jitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. Jeff Chan is a guy whose channel I like a lot. There's some things he does that I don't love as far as sparring, too much slipping, uh, going underneath, bending his lower back, um, structure giving. He gets a lot of things. He can break it down. He's obviously gotten very popular, um, but he's 4-1 in MMA, and all his opponents were kind of cans with no experience, and even the last one. So we'll see how he does when he gets to a higher level and how that all works out for him. Now, he is very fast, and that's something you don't want to rely on because that isn't going to last forever and in this sparring he's going to spar teddy olivas instructor at new york martial arts academy he's been there at the jkd school for four years since 2018 but muay thai boxing wrestling brazilian jiu-jitsu is he really doing jkd or is it more like his muay thai and boxing background well kind of something to question as we get there so before we get into that let me play you just a little bit of clips of bruce lee and myself in mma and some jkd techniques and then we'll get right into it this lead in the movie here's some chi sao playful i'm on double outside playful chi sao is big country Roy nelson who had legitimate chi sao skills kind of kung fuish takedown i do there even he said, "Do drunken kung fu." So he's a football player. Here's my drunken kung fu sag headlock takedown. But being able to flow, be non telegraphic. I talk about that in other videos and other YouTubers, guys. You know, it's about finding the principles and the concepts from various martial arts and making them uniquely your your own. <clears throat> How to fight effectively, flow through the ranges of combat, the chaos of combat, as I do chi sao with the great Anderson Silva and stopped the whole press conference and everyone apparently stopped and just watched. Well, I landed a punch on him there. So the three months I was training at Black House and sparring Leota Machida and Roger Gracie and, and guys like that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy my channel. Let's look at some more Bruce Lee footage here now. Trapping skills and down at Long Beach. I try to take what I thought was the best footage I have in my playlist. Some stuff maybe you've never seen before. Depending on how big of a diehard of Bruce Lee you are. But as far as a philosopher to mix the best from each style and put it all together and not just follow what he did, but make it uniquely your own, you got to understand the philosophy behind the man, behind Jeet Kune Do. Here's me doing the first straight blast in pro MMA. Back in 2000, against Pink Race champion Yuki Kondo, who fought Tito for the light heavyweight title. Sliding sidekick, a straight blast at the Daido Juko headquarters in Japan. How to straight blast on the ground to lead you into elbows and clear the path. How to trap on the ground. I've been teaching that for a long, long time and still neglected. And then going into a straight blast there, I got a couple punches in after the overhand right missed at the Daido Juko Kudo First World Championships in 2001. See the sliding roundhouse kick we haven't really covered from Bruce, but he was a big favorite of that. And the sliding side kick to the gut. I also did that against Ken Velasquez when I sparred him and then regretted it, thinking he'd kick my butt. Some straight blast action. How to use that oblique kick to set up the flying switch kick. The one it's punched, showing that it's more of a lap push. Before we watch um, other footage in the UFC and whatnot, here's footage of me using JKD-ish techniques fast techniques in MMA myself back in the day because I had trained Jeet Kune Do and 
was a fan of Bruce and the Taoji Kundo and all of that. So there's that straight blast again. I think it's important to take note of that. It was a good opener in the fight against a much more experienced fighter to get in his head. Punching quickly from bottom, flowing, boom, kicking from bottom. Now I'm going to get to a lot of John Jones and Anderson Silva footage trapping and uh, knee kick footage, so please stay tuned. And always, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Get that down there in the comments. Let me know what you think. Flowing kick punch, flowing through the range. Just front kick to the chin and guillotine back in 1997. Sliding side kick to the leg and chest in 97. That's long before people thought you could even make kicks work in mixed martial arts called no holds barred fighting back then let's see that straight blast again at the world championships he, he actually used wing chung in the fight with pettis he trapped his hand and hit him with an elbow once all right guys so the that video you want to see the ufc bruce lee five favorite jkd techniques used in mma i think you would enjoy it now i hope you stayed with me Let's get in a breaking down Jeff Chan, heavy sparring versus Jeet Kune Do fighter. Now they talk about strong lead forward. They talk, you know, Bajong stance and stuff like that, guys. And if you see my footage there when I was sliding, sliding side kick to the leg, sliding side kick to the chest way back in 1997, back when no one thought you could actually kick effectively and no holds barred fighting. You could see that I'm in that Bajong style stance. I'm very sideways. And when I fight Southpaw and when I did that straight blast against uh, Yuki Kondo, unfortunately elbows weren't allowed. So I kind of pushed in too far with my forward pressure on the hook. And uh, it wasn't that strong, but it was effective. And even talked about it in a magazine a year later in SRS magazine in Japan that someone sent me. So um, anyway, guys, let's break down Jeff Chan here. Versus a JKD fighter. Oh, nice side kick to the liver. Drops Chan there. Good long knee. Good calf kick to punch and another low kick. There you see him slipping into the high kick, which has happened a lot if you watch his sparring footage. A nice side kick again from, uh, I believe it's Teddy. And here we go. So this is go. Teddy one of the Jeet Kune Do instructors at New York Martial Arts Academy. I was invited to do a seminar at their gym, and this was sparring film the first night before the seminar. So as usual, guys, because of short attention spans shown in my analytics, I cut out the boring parts and straight to the action. Because me and Teddy did nine rounds together, I also went ahead and removed the warm-up slash lighter rounds and straight to the harder A little switch punch series there from Jeff Chan I like. If I kept it all in, this video would... Now, this is all the boxing sparring, so I'm going to pass up the boxing sparring until they get some shin guards on. Again, this is at the New York Martial Arts Academy, plugging them. Teddy Olivas is who he's sparring. Now, as we see, Teddy is a good boxer, but he is very square. So, you know, he's only been doing JKD for three and a half years, it looks like. So more of this is his boxing and Muay Thai background. But he is giving Jeff Chan problems. Jeff Chan has problems in the pocket. He slips into high kicks, ducks under, bends at the waist too much where he really leans over. He's relying on his speed and reflexes. That's not a great thing, guys, uh, because Father Time is undefeated. That eventually goes away. I mean, it makes you look really cool on YouTube, gets you subscribers. But is that the best thing to do? I really don't think so. Um, however, he does get shifting. He does get blitzing. He does understand a lot of concepts that I've been teaching for many, many years that a lot of other, even good martial artists and instructors simply don't understand. They don't get, if you look at my new striking, look at my, um, MMA greatest hits. If you look at my verse 30 top UFC MMA fighters, check out I'm landing and not getting hit back. That's pretty important. That's the name of the game. So let's go forward here. Um, to where they put on the shin guards and see what that looks like. Starting here, round six. So they already did a lot of boxing sparring. Jeff Chan said this was his first night in there the day before he taught his seminar, which is interesting how hard that they are going. Here we start some Muay Thai rounds. You can see that it's darker. We were literally here all night. Let me tell you. Let me sparring round after rounds. 
So starting kind of slow here, getting a feel for each other. And these sidekicks are landing over and over again from Teddy, meaning that just a little square himself, a little too much Muay Thai, and MMA striking is different than Muay Thai, guys. Now, Jeff has very good darting in and out movement and switching, as I say, good long knee there. Good kick from Teddy to the body. Return with a low kick. Nice return by Jeff. Teddy's getting him with that side kick over and over again. Got to parry that down away to the dark side. Nice Kazushi Waza sweep. I taught in 2012, a little Shotokan style. After the Oda Machida first did that to Nakamura in the UFC. Oh, Jeff getting, uh, you know, missing punches there with his chin up in the pocket. He relies a little too much on kicks versus punches. He's relying on kicks and his speed and these tricky combinations. I myself had to rely on kicky, kick centric, tricky combinations with my all of 71 inch reach versus light heavyweight and heavyweight champions. I sparred for over 20 years around the world. Uh, you know, that would have a 74 to 80 inch reach. So Jeff's good on the outside. As we see, nice kick catch there, something I'm not great at Muay Thai style, underneath and passing. Good low kicks. He's good at dipping the outside there and landing that second low kick a lot. And the side kick, lead side kick to the liver, nails him, drops him down there. I was a big fan of using the sliding side kick, Bruce Lee style. Like I said, I even did it the one time I sparred Cain Velasquez, and then I thought, oh, my God, he's going to kill me now. I, I got fear after I nailed him with a sliding side kick on the duck because I, I just sparred Herschel Walker and did that. Now, Jeff's good with the, the, the tie clinch and these – Knees with the, the head pummels there. Nice sweep, lead sweep there. I do like his uh, sweep videos. Tried to basically uh, lift that leg up, single leg style, treetop style to dump him down there unsuccessfully. Now here's a range where Jeff's chin is too high up where someone really nasty like a Matt Brown is going to give him elbows at the range when he's playing with his knees. A little bit too Muay thai -ish and not enough boxing. I'm going to hurt you with my hands. Okay. You see, Teddy is pretty square himself, too. Now, is he right-handed fighter that's fighting orthodox, or is he really fighting J.K.D. Bajong strong lead forward? I wonder. A lot of UFC champions have been strong lead forward or at least very good switch fighters. And you have to be a good switch fighter to be a uh, switch stance fighter. Oh, nice combination there by Jeff. Oh, he eats the high kick there, and that's kind of what we're, I've been talking about. You see, he does eat a lot of high kicks. When he's slipping under, I'm, I'm a, I like to slip punches. I like to cover, but I don't duck under. I hate it when boxing instructors, it always hurt my lower back and it's just not good in the kickboxing, Dutch kickboxing or MMA game. You're going to duck into high kicks. You're going to duck into high knees. Oh, almost like now they're going really hard here. Uh, surprisingly hard for your first night at a gym. Good calf kick. We saw that in the opener. There's the high kick he eats. Round eight, so he started with the, the shin guards on round six, or at least the footage that Jeff put out. He said he didn't put out the later warm-up rounds and that they spar a lot of rounds at this gym, which is great. Now we see Teddy's getting a little tired. You see that exhale? His kick slowing down, his movement, but he still lands a nice counter lead side kick there. I've always been a fan of lead side kicks and a lot of the Sonda fighters, even the UFC, and in one, use that lead side kick. I, a lead sidekick saved my life in a two-on-one stick attack when the guy was behind me and the guy in front was hitting me with a stick back in the day. And I did do a jump round kick back in the day in a uh, street fight versus the high school wrestler. So it can all be done. He was doing kind of wounded crane stance there. That wasn't great staying in the pocket. You could get taken down there. Again, Jeff's very good, but he relies a lot on his speed and reflexes. So anyway, guys, I think this is a really cool video by Jeff. I'm excited for him to put out more footage with the other JKD instructors. I just watched a video they did with Jeff kind of learning along kind of the JKD as boxing and the shuffle steps and things like that. You have to know your basic boxing and quarter turns and all that. No matter what the name is, it's a lot of the same concepts and principles. We'll go over this just one more time. Nice parry that lead sidekick. Nice catch of the round kick there. They're both catching a lot of kicks really well. I don't catch kicks all that much, so so that's really good skill there if you can get away with it. See him dart to the outside and then that secondary low kick. It doesn't have a ton of power, but 
but Jeff does land that combination a lot. Good long knee there. Um, you don't want to be too Muay Thai-ish in MMA. It's a different range. You got to blitz in and out. And when you face a really high level, like an alpha male wrestler or something, if Jeff ever, you know, decides to stop taking that YouTube money, in, nice Kazushi Waza sweep there. I have a video on that. Samurai sweep, if you will, different names and different styles. Now, lifting that front leg a little too much Muay Thai style there by Jeff. Teddy is a good fighter. He's a good boxer. He's strong. He's in there. A little too square for real JKD. Like I said, that's not really the Bajong stance. I don't see a straight blast out of him. So I'm curious if any of that came out from the instructor there in the back at the JKD school. I hope it wasn't just boxing sparring with him. All we saw was boxing sparring with him. I want to see the more kickboxing or MMA style sparring. It looks like it's just kickboxing sparring. I don't see these takedown attempts, um, which unfortunately I would like to see because, you know, JKD was straight fighting. It wasn't MMA. It was to be the ultimate expression in street fighting style. Nice sweep by Jeff there. There. Boom, that lead side. Nice, nice tap. I use that fake, that fake kind of uh, backhand to bring the hands up, the guard up to the sidekick. That was beautiful by Teddy. Nicely jab there. I think he was trying a vertical punch, lead vertical punch, more JKD style. Uh, there. Nice kick to the front of the quad. That hurts a lot more when you get that front of the quad. It charlies it up. Nice lead sweep to right hand. I do like his videos on that. It's something I would like to utilize more. You know, I was younger and my knee didn't just have knee surgery. Now Teddy's getting tired as we talked about earlier. See, so he's dropping his structure now. Something I just talked about in all our Oliver Ankamp video. You got to keep your structure and be ready to cover. Just because you get tired, guys. Beautiful sweep again. Uh, really, really nice. Good kick catches. Now, Teddy's going boxing. Now that he got tired, his back is uh, shelled up over, and he's giving up his structure because now he just wants to box on the inside and lean over because he's tired. Well, that's the worst thing for your lungs. Biomechanically, that's not good, and he almost ate that head kick. That was really hard. Look at these kicks now. Jeff turned it up, and I don't know if there's, like, a really nasty liver punch that he didn't put in here, but, I mean, he got a high kick for it. That was almost a little too hard. Now, they did back off at times when the guy wasn't going to be able to protect against the knees and high kicks. So sometimes they both showed her strength for a little bit of a challenge gym war. We don't see Jeff challenged quite this much. And now this guy, I think, has had some amateur MMA fights, probably some amateur boxing fights. Uh, JKD School, let me know. Um, but I have I looked on Tapology with his name. I didn't see any pro MMA fights. So keep that in mind. There's levels to this game. Anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. Let me know what you think it down there in the comments. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Jeff, if you watch this, I hope you enjoyed it. And JKD Academy, maybe you want to get me on video or talk about using the straight blast and Bajong stance and lead sidekick sliding sidekicks that I did uh, way before anybody else was doing that kind of stuff. Take care, everybody. Kaboom. Stay safe and watch your back.